Now I've just received this little Nano VNA. The only reason I bought this is to test my home built antennas and also have a look at some commercial ones, see how well they match with what's been advertised and uh, it's actually quite surprising. Now this cost uh, a few pennies under £40. I ordered it last Thursday, received it this Monday. Uh, there's lots of YouTube videos on how accurate these are and uh, when compared against commercial grade equipment and things like that and uh, for its use it works extremely well especially at the price point it does have a little internal battery it comes in a nice little plastic case with a few patch cables it comes with three SMAs for calibration an open circuit a uh, closed circuit, shorted circuit and a 50 ohm load Two SMAs on the side, uh, I, for antenna testing, see what frequency my antennas are resonant on, I only need the channel zero, so that's the top one as we look at it in this way, it does have a colour touch screen, I would recommend getting a little uh, inductive pen, something like that, choosing the touch screen with your fingers, it's not very accurate, it is a lovely screen, it is small, you can connect this to a PC through the C port connector there, it does come with a USB cable for that, uh, which is actually a standard sort of B type USB to USB 3 connection to a type C. Uh, that also does charge it as it can be used remotely, could have a little internal battery. The on off switch on the top and a little rocker switch uh, for selecting through the menus. So it is touch screen, but uh, the, the rocker switch isn't very accurate either. But for this price point, what are we expecting? So when we turn it on, so the screen gives you a lot of information. This can do a lot, and I'll be completely honest, uh, I've only bought it for using for antennas, and that's the only bit I've learned about. I will delve into this in more depth as uh, I play more with it, uh, get a better understanding of how it works. Now, there's lots of videos in there on on these on the calibrator and things like that and many say it's not really necessary if you do want to calibrate it it is quite simple using these three SMAs if we go into the menu calibration calibrate that's just for the open one first so that's the one without the pin that's that one Once that's accepted, you move on to the shorted one. So that's one with the pin. Enter that one. It lasts us for the load, which is the 50 ohm. There is other calibrations you can do with this as well, but as I'm only doing it for an, for my antennas, I don't really need to do I don't need to do those. And so with the load, press load, and then we can move on to done, just save that, okay, and that's ready for use. Now, I'm only interested in what my antenna is resonant on. So what I want to do is get rid of majority of the information on this screen. I just want to see this yellow line. That's what I'm interested in. So we go back into the menu. Go back. We want to go to display. Trace. Select the yellow one. We just want that single. So we just want to show that single trace. I've not altered the start and out and stop frequencies uh, for now you can get very accurate with this by actually tuning that down to the actual frequencies you're actually looking at so you can actually get it absolutely spot on if you tune an antenna yourself uh, and firstly i'm going to connect a commercial grade antenna this is a comet civil military air antenna cost 90 pounds in the uk and as we can see, what we're looking for is the dips. The deeper the dip, the better it is. So as we enter that there, it's showing it's at 99 megahertz. 
Now, realistically, we really want this to be somewhere in around about 127 megahertz as a center frequency. And it's best dip, which I would want it to be around 300 megahertz for a military airband. It's actually 396. So, uh, not very good. And you will find that with a lot of commercial air uh, antennas that they are not as advertised. So I've built my own dipoles and that is what this is going to be used for. One checking and when I build more. And we can see the dips on this straight away are much, much better. And where this one is resonant, the deepest lull there, is 252. I prefer that to be about 300, so uh, I will be modifying that slightly to get that right in the middle of the military airband. And we can also see it's also resonant up on 531 as well. You'll find a lot of antennas are resonant on more than one frequency. I built a uh, civil dipole, which is centered on 120 and uh, it's also resonant on 300 so as a dual band antenna for civil and military that will actually work a lot better cost me 15 pounds to make and uh, works a lot better than the commercial grade one at 90 pounds now what you do want to make sure is that any antennas that you're testing are in clear sky you're not holding them and things like that if it's a mobile antenna make sure you're holding them vertical you'll be surprised at the difference it makes uh, also, if like telescopics, which are ideal for handouts uh, and are the most accurate, you can actually see at what length to, to what sort of frequency. So if you go to, to your local airfield, you can actually set that to sort of 126, 127, right in the middle of the civil airband. And uh, that will work really quite well. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, very good little device, I'm really glad I bought it and uh, it'll help me in some of my projects.